Cause for Hope with Dr. Larry Mittnall and Pilar Pedraza is brought to you by Coles Cares and Ascension Via Christi in partnership with PBS Kansas Public Television. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Pilar Pedraza with my co-host Larry Mittnall, a child and adolescent psychiatrist at Ascension Via Christi. We are here to continue our discussion of an important health topic that affects us all, family, mental health and wellness. Each year, suicide claims the lives of a growing number of Sedgwick County teens and adults who don't realize they are not alone and that help is available, often leaving behind friends and family who didn't recognize the signs or were unsure how to help. With the help of a grant from Coles Cares, Ascension Via Christi, Wichita State University and other local partners are actively trying to get the community thinking and talking about mental wellness and what we can all do to help ourselves and our children stay mentally fit. Now tonight we are going to be talking about bullying and all of its effects and how we can ameliorate those to a certain extent. And this is something that really affects children and teens, but also adults. It does, um, absolutely. And so whether, um, Pilar, we're talking about um, someone who has been um, perpetrated against or who has experienced bullying, um, someone who's been doing the, the bullying and being the perpetrator, or um, a witness to um, bullying going on, it's important to really address this issue and talk about ways to help um, people thrive because um, there can be really significant consequences to a person's life. And there's something very interesting that you said in there. You mentioned the perpetrator because bullying does not spring up out of nowhere. So you're absolutely right, Pilar, that that bullying doesn't just come out of nowhere, that often there are other things going on. Um, and, and in the life of the person who's doing the bullying and perhaps in the life of the person being bullied. And so it's important for us to highlight those things and address the underlying concerns because that can really make a difference um, in the life of all that are involved. Yeah. And bullying isn't new, but it does definitely seems to have taken on a, a new power over the last couple of decades. Why is that? Sure, um, so that's a really good question about what, where is this and, and how is it? And actually, I should probably take just a few moments too before jumping into your, to the response in describing what we mean by bullying because often we kind of use the term and it gets um, uh, thrown around a little loosely. Um, so when we talk about bullying, often that's unwanted aggression, um, uh, aggressive behavior, kind of often between children, but again, it can be uh, across the spectrum in, um, in late adolescence and even in adulthood. So the one of the features is that there can be a perceived or a real difference in um, kind of a power balance. And the way that can look um, may be different for a different situation. So it could be uh, differences in, in size, it could be social clout and connectedness. Um, it could be in, you know, likes and followers on a uh, you know, in, in, social, in social media. And then the third aspect um, that can be a part of bullying is um, that, it's, that it's a repetitive thing, that it's not just a one-time event because we know that, you know, uh, kids or adults can get into scuffles, skirmishes, disagreements, um, but typically there's a pattern to it too that repeats. And so you're absolutely right um, that uh, some of the latest data is that, you know, up to 50% of young people throughout their school time will experience some amount of bullying, about 10% of those will have some pretty regular bullying that's a part of their uh, that's a part of their life and so um, while we can't pinpoint one you know particular determinant that this is the one thing that causes bullying I think we alluded to some of that earlier in that um, often there are underlying things that either the um, that often the perpetrator may be dealing with. And so it's not uncommon that, you know, anxiety or depression or um, situational stresses too um, in their home, in their environment that also might be um, kind of contributing to uh, this behavior that we see. I think the other thing too is, is in terms of our world of technology, our ability to, um, to share things, and that can be for good 
or bad. And so you can imagine um, the, the, the one-time joke or prank getting turned into something that's repeated and shared. And so that takes a one event into that repetitive, um, that repetitive cycle that we see and associate with bullying. And you had some pretty interesting statistics in there. 50% have it happen at least once, 10% yes. uh, repetitive, uh, consistent. As a parent, those are worrying. How do you, you, you know, a parent's first reaction is, I want to bully-proof my child. Yes. Is that even possible? <laughs> right. How do you do that? So, unfortunately, there isn't something for that. I mean, um, you know, we, we all want the bubble wrap around our kids and, and to, um, to try to defend off and prevent any potential harm. I think the best things are, one is talking about it, right? Um, and being able to be a listening ear and, and inquiring about those things. I think all of us have you know, the, had the experience, certainly as a parent, where you come home and you ask, how's the day? And they just say, fine. And that's, that's the extent of things. And so having the opportunity to um, listen, pry a little bit, ask a little bit more about the texture of their day, about the types of relationships, about the, the struggles that they've had to are ways that parents can maybe get in to understand more about what are some of the dynamics and the relationships going on and um, to hopefully be sensitive to hearing anything that sounds like bullying might be occurring in, their, in the life of their child. And certainly being aware of bullying is an issue. And you spoke with a local woman who's really pushing that as her yes. personal crusade. Absolutely. There, um, I got to the honor, the distinct pleasure of uh, talking to singer-songwriter Jenny Woods about, uh, about her own experiences and, um, and how she's been able to wrap an anti-bullying campaign around her music. And she's been able to do this in spite of some pretty significant circumstances, a really tragic um, accident and kind of recovery from that and then of course the pandemic and still she's found a way to share um, a message of hope and bringing um, awareness to this situation. So I think this would probably be a perfect time to um, kind of roll the footage on, um, on our really great conversation. Well, I'm really excited to be here with the amazing Jenny Wood in her home studio and um, what a pleasure and privilege it is um, for us to get to sit down and talk about, I think, things that really matter and touch the heart of, of people. And I think your life kind of combines a lot of those really wonderful things with both music and really strong message for, for kids. So, um, so since music is medicine, I mean, I'm essentially sitting in your clinic. So thank you, Dr. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's an honor. Um, so I thought maybe the way to begin might be um, for, for me and for those watching too, to hear a little bit about your story, your journey, and, and maybe how that led you back to Wichita. Yes. Okay. Um, well, when I was uh, getting out of high school and, and beginning college, I knew that I wanted to sing and I knew that I wanted to, but to, to sing emotionally. Okay. Um, and so I would take, uh, but at, I was also writing at the same time. So after a day, I would go home and write my thoughts and write what happened. And then those started to morph into, I would put sound to those, uh, to those words. Mm. And then over time, I would build little songs. I wasn't playing guitar yet. Okay. Um, but then I met uh, some people who were playing in a band and they were auditioning singers. I tried out for them and my whole life changed really after that. Mm. Everything that I got to, f that I felt, I got to project um, with sound. Uh, because of these three gentlemen who were wanting to play rock in a rock band, and really that changed my whole life. So ever since then, I mean, that was I was about 20, and now okay. I'm 38, and I've stayed on that same path. Um, there's, I know my calling, I know my purpose. Um, it is to connect with people through sound, through story, through emotion, okay. um, and so to remain on that, no matter what has happened in my life. Um, I, that is that is still my soul to to to, to uh, follow that path. Wow, where all did the music take you? Um, yes, it uh, it took me to Nashville. I lived in Nashville for most of my twenties, wow. and um, and that was really I was embarrassed that I didn't continue um, with with schooling for music theater. But then I learned so much in Nashville because. Mm -hmm. Everyone, I worked at a, 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 a music music venue, Dive, okay. a restaurant, yeah. and the dishwasher was a phenomenal singer-songwriter, <laughs> composed all his own music, and he's yeah. back there washing dishes, chewing gum, okay. and he's yeah. brilliant. Wow. And ev everybody that I worked with was an incredible artist, but we were all just trying to make a dollar to be able to uh, to be able to do what we loved. 
So it took wow. me, to, and I like to call that my schooling was Nashville. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then I came back home. I have, a, or I had two nieces and a nephew, and they were raised uh, in a single parent family by mm -hmm. my uh, brother-in-law. Um, and they, I, I knew that I wanted to watch them grow. I, I would ta be talking to them on the phone in Nashville, yeah. and it was I could hear their voices change, and yeah. it just really hit me. And I knew that they were struggling uh, without a mother, and it was time for me to come home. So, yeah. okay. um, so I was really grateful for that. Yeah. And then I came home, and I started playing with them. I would start to sing with okay. them. Yeah. And then it started to expand, and then I'm doing childcare, and I'm singing with the kids, I'm babysitting, <laughs> and then it just started to it just with organically. Your yes. fan base is growing, exactly. You're producing really great things, and yes. you know all those cre creative juices are flowing, yes. and that's really tremendous. It's it's um, it's amazing that it was the heart of you know taking care of kids in the in your own you know family, um, and that love was big enough to pull you out of what otherwise sounds like a wonderland of kind of music craftsmen and artisans, you know, all living together in community. And it sounds like that didn't stop though, your ongoing kind of musical growth and then looking for ways to touch people's lives. So when you got back to Wichita and you're connected with family and you're sharing your music in these really organic ways, how did that turn into, you know, a program and movement to also kind of combine both your gifts with reaching kids, um, especially with the message of kind of anti-bullying. Yes, um, in working with kids, I started. I, I at first it was just a it was just a neat experience, but <laughs> yeah. then I started to notice there was something similar that the kids would talk to me about afterward, mm. and I'm very very grateful that the voice is a very vulnerable instrument. You can mm. kind of hear the emotion in every. Even when somebody's talking, you can hear where they're at. Yeah. And so I was very grateful that especially young females would connect with me about, about singing. Mm. And they would tell me their stories. And I would get messages on social media, their stories, what they were going through. Mm. And th it, it just kept on building from there. It went from a few kids over here to uh, a teacher saying, hey, could you actually come and play for my kids' class? Mm -hmm. And then it went from a class to then a whole school. Yeah. And from talking about what kids were most vulnerable with, and that was being intimidated, being scared. Mm -hmm. um, and music gave them power. Whenever, mm -hmm. uh, whenever the sound started to happen, the kids who got in there were really scared. You could tell that they were kind of feeling very uncomfortable. Sure. Then the drums start. Drums. <laughs> and, and they start, OK, OK, what's going on here? Yeah. And then I start singing, and the, and the girls who are like, <clears throat> <laughs> the, then I start singing, and the girls are like, huh? <laughs> and so w what I'm very grateful that that, that universal bond yeah. um, is what gets the message across about bullying, because I understand that. I understand yeah. being a female in rock music mm -hmm. and trying to do my own thing and in a male-dominated genre. Yeah. So I understand about being kind of where you feel really small mm -hmm. and how to make your, how to make your uh, footprint a little bit larger. And so with, uh, with my amp and with my voice, learning how to uh, take the negative and make it creative. Take what, take what I was feeling or what people would say or what things, things were happening, and I would take that and I would put it into, a, I'd get a little bit louder, I'd turn my amp up just a little bit more, I'd use a little bit grittier of a guitar tone, I would really get in their faces, and yeah. it, the, the, mu the music started to develop based off of my interactions with people. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, so it sounds like, you know, you are, you found an organic way to share your, your music and your gift. Um, you're getting really beautiful feedback from young kids who are resonating with the message. Um, and so life sounds really good, but then it sounds like tragedy strikes. So can you talk a little bit about what that was like and, and how it might have, you know, changed things that you were doing? Yes. Um, I was, at the time I was uh, doing schools, I was doing the school presentations. Um, and I say anti-bullying, but it's you know anti-intimidation, anti-manipulation, bullying awareness. How to um, how to protect what you have and, and pursue your goals and dreams, regardless of what's happening. Um, so I was uh, busy. I was doing uh, schools, and um, and my oldest niece, who is the success of our family, she was graduating from IB program at okay. East. Wow. And those kids have been through so much, and. Um, it was really, um, her name's Kat, and she was just really a miracle of the family. Both Kat and Rosie just excelled so beautifully to watch them grow and uh, succeed in life. So for Kat to graduate from IB, which is a very difficult program at yes. East, um, 
it was a huge day for me and my mom and my, and my youngest niece, Rosie. So we were all getting ready to go to the, her graduation. It was a graduation day. Okay. Uh, it was a big day, and it was my dad's birthday too, which he's in spirit now too. So oh, wow. we were all just really excited, and um, and then uh, and then we were on our way, and we were uh, hit by a vehicle, mm -hmm. and uh, next thing I know, well, I barely knew, but uh, my uh, I came to and was told that I was the only survivor of the accident, um, and. Uh, since then, and I hate to, I don't want to, it's, the truth is, um, uh, my life has changed forever and it will never be the same. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very grateful to be able to do anything at all. Mm -hmm. The doctors gave me a 5% chance of survival. Um, I shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that I have, I, I, I know that it's, it's my mom and dad, Rosie, my youngest niece, they are telling me, you have work to do here, Jenny. Mm. You have things, you have sound you have to give out. You have messages that these young kids are giving you, that these people who you connect with emotionally, you are the host to make things, to make people feel better, mm. to make people feel stronger and heal uh, with sound. That is your purpose. That's why you're still going to stick around here on earth. So wow. my whole life has changed, um, mm. but um, I... Uh, I'm still, I'm still, I'm, st I'm still walking forward. I just, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how to. Um, it's, it's, it's uh, to have a near-death experience is. Uh, I'm changed forever. That's all I can sure. say. But I, I know my purpose. Um, that's incredible, and I appreciate you being so vulnerable too, and and sharing, um, and sharing such a such an intense. Um, moment in your life that isn't just a moment. Like it, it continues to live through, it sounds like both your music and, and, your, um, and your words. Uh, were there some things that really have really helped you with in terms of mental wellness and, and health and fortitude from recovering from such a tragedy? Yes, um, definitely. I think it, I've had to learn a lot about myself. I've spent a lot of time, I think, the, the two months that I was in hospital, it was so much time laying there and thinking mm -hmm. um, and being with a new part of myself. A part of me died and a new part w began. And um, so spirituality is incredibly important to me. Um, so I began uh, just thinking about my parents in spirit and Rosie and thinking about my trusted loved ones in spirit. And so from, that, from there, I just kind of felt the company of them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then the first time I tried singing again, that oh. was a really spiritual experience. I was okay. so scared to do it. Yeah. But the sun was coming in this, win this window and I just tried and uh, my voice was still there. And I, uh, that, was a, that was a spiritual experience for me. So yeah. um, spirit is very important to me. Nature is very important to me. Okay. Um, relying on healthy, uh, healthy, encouraging uh, friends, support, mm -hmm. a okay. support system. Yeah. That is hugely important. Yeah. Um, no matter what age you are, that person who gets you, who laughs with you, and who knows, who, who sees the best in you and knows that you should, <laughs> that, th that's the person you need to talk to about everything. Yes. Everything that's getting to you or somebody says something and this is, take that to that person mm -hmm. and share it with them and they will build you back up. They will help. So. Uh, safe sources of friendship is uh, is incredibly uh, critical. Good. Yeah. And and actually, I mean, you. I think you already um, launched into where I was where I was thinking of going, which is, you know, are there words of just health and help and encouragement that you have from maybe for maybe the parents and kids who might be feeling a little bit more isolated, you know, um, and and maybe they haven't experienced kind of the the depths of of, of tragedy that you've expressed, but they do feel like there's a there's a great kind of separation from the things that they love and the things that feed them. So I guess what what would you give or offer to those parents um, for kind of encouragement and, yes. and some of those kids too who are watching? Yes, um, it's so delicate for a parent because you're watching the most important thing to you uh, have a hard time and you don't know how to reach them. That's such a um, I only have pets and I emotionally feel attached to them. So I can't imagine what a parent must go through whenever their child is, is struggling. But I think what's, uh, is, is, it's really important for 
uh, the parents to understand that the, ki the kids are going through their own time, but to ask them to just have a conversation about yeah. anything, yeah. Um, to, yeah. get, to get talking going any possible way, um, because over time, the, you, the child will feel safer. And when the child feels safer, for me, I'm very grateful that music makes kids feel safe and then they can open up. And for parents, I think any kind of conversation to ask them even a, 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 about something in their class or, you wore that shirt today. I love that shirt when you wear that <laughs> shirt. That is the coolest shirt. Anything to yes. get the conversation, to make the kid feel safe enough to open up because over time they will. Okay. And they'll, the parent is talking to them about something uh, really surface maybe, mm -hmm. but then the, the kid feels a little bit safe and the kid says, yeah, today was kind of a hard day. I don't, there's these one, there's these guys that, and then all of a sudden, then, then the, the, the ocean so opens, yes. yes. And the kid just get, was vulnerable and gave a little bit, and the parent catches that and, and, and responds back to that very healthily, very understanding, and very, you are safe here. It's all about making the kids feel safe. <laughs> then they open up and they can heal. Oh, that's so. wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, any, um, any parting things or um, kind of last um, words or thoughts that you have that maybe are on your heart about um, both the things you've been doing and encouraging in families, especially against, you know, intimidation and, and that sort of thing, any, or anything really. So there are no limits, but, <laughs> the, um, but yeah, any, any closing thoughts that you might have? Um, I, it's, it's just ironic to me that, uh, and, and will always be, the little weird thing that I did when I was in school and, the, and somebody said something or somebody did something or this happened and, and I would write about it. Mm -hmm. The little weird thing that I did, I always had my journal with me, I always had my words with me, I will always do. That little weird thing became my life. Mm -hmm. That journaling and write and putting that into sound and, put it, and making something to show somebody else to see and then they emotionally react to it and connect with it and can relate with it. Yeah. What? <laughs> and then after that, they talk to me after a show and they tell me that they understand. And they talk to me like I'm their family member. It is unbelievable. Wow. So my point is for youth to the weird thing that you do, that you think there, there's no hope and it's a, that's a far-fetched dream and all that. I've heard that before. I grew up with that. I know that. Yeah. It's not a far-fetched dream. If you keep on doing that thing that is only yours, mm -hmm. take the negative, put it into something creative, mm -hmm. put it into the thing that you love that you think will never lead anywhere, I promise you, if you continue to spend time with it every day, it will lead you somewhere. It could become your lifestyle, your whole life as an adult, which I'm very grateful to, to be able to do. That is so beautiful. I mean, what a message of hope. Uh, Jenny, I, um, I, I'm, I'm restraining myself from keeping you here all day. Thanks so much for the wisdom that you shared. Um, and I think uh, a lot of families are gonna be grateful to hear your voice. And, uh, and I'm excited that if they've not heard your music, they get to, um, they get to experience that um, as well. So thank you for all that you do. And I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, doctor. It's an honor. Thank you. Just a really fascinating conversation there. And yes some great advice that we can all take even as adults is not letting others negativity define us that's yes. really hard to do sometimes it really is it's hard to not you know wear um, someone else's kind of emotions or what their frustration is and again i think that goes back to if we can you know help um, young people to understand too some of the layers of emotion that are coming out maybe as the anger, the frustration, the, you know, we call them externalizing behaviors, but being aggressive, that often it's not just about, you know, the action that's happening in the moment, but actually some of the things going on beneath. Yeah, and some of those things going on beneath, especially when you're talking about a child who is being the bully, they're dealing with other things. What are some of those things that can kind of lead to bullying behavior? Sure. So, you know, there are, um, there are a number of things that, that can be under the surface and often it's usually a kind of a complex interplay of a couple of things. So we know that kids who, um, who are experiencing some, um, some degree of, uh, of neglect or absence in their life, that they can be a little bit more vulnerable to engaging in such behaviors. Um, kids with um, perhaps some poor attachments. And again, it's been, it's been hard to kind of connect in the full way that we would have liked, you know, throughout the year too. Um, but sometimes that can be part of what's underlying um, depression and anxiety as well. So um, if you imagine, you know, kids really struggling with uh, ways to both understand and healthy ways um, to cope and those coming out in really untoward ways towards, you know, friends or friends or others. And you talked about uh, social media a little bit earlier, and even though many kids have not spent a whole lot of time in the classroom around their peers over the last year, at least not as much as they normally would have, 
that bullying still exists because of social media. Cyberbullying has kind of brought the bullying into the yes. home in a way we've never seen before. Right. As a parent, how can you help your child if you think they're dealing with that? Sure, so one is um, to ask kids about their relationship, but don't limit it to you know the friends that they've seen or the people that they've been around. I mean, that's one sphere of influence, but especially if you know that your child is kind of connected you know, digitally, um, either through games or social media, asking about that too. And I think that's that's a there's a lot of room for us to grow our ability to normalize those types of conversations because they are happening whether we're monitoring them or not. So just asking, you know, how's how how are things going with with you and your friends? You know, sometimes I read about or hear about you know people being mean to one another online or making fun of uh, of friends or sharing things that um, put down someone else that you might know or associate with. Have you seen anything like that? Have you experienced anything like that? And it gives permission to have the conversations that help us get to um, helping to both shape shape um, their conversation around um, bullying, but helpfully help us to identify if they are being bullied to say, actually, this isn't, you know, this isn't right, this isn't fair, this isn't the way that someone should be treating you. Let's help you to feel empowered. And if you feel that your child is being bullied or perhaps is being the bully, what kind of help is available out there? Sure, um, so that's that's uh, really important. So one is um, certainly whether someone is doing the bullying or the, the bullying is being perpetrated against them, um, it's it's really important to involve the village. I mean, we've heard the saying that, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. This is one of those instances too, where both the person being bullied feels, you know, isolated and perhaps not as supported as they can be, and they often feel a little vulnerable. So enlisting the help of people around them, so that's counselors, that's principals, that's teachers, um, you know, having the community also, you know, being vigilant with you. And, and I think if we start seeing a pattern in kids' lives where they're maybe avoiding school or, um, you know, having headaches by body aches before um, school and we learn that maybe bullying is a part of that. Looking for other assistance like professional help and talking to a counselor, talking to a pediatrician, talking to um, a psychiatrist, those things can be helpful too at coming up with a, a plan to help them to be brave. Yeah. Well, we're starting to run out of time, but I uh, did want to make a quick physical health note before we leave everybody today. We are not masked, Yes, but we're both vaccinated now yes. and we are socially distanced. Everybody else in the studio is masked, yes. so we are still maintaining protocols. And as you noticed in the interview, masks worn there as well. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Mittenall, and we will see you again next month. I hope you will join us as well. In the meantime, if you have not yet taken advantage of the free Suspenders for Hope Suicide Awareness and Training Program, we hope you'll do so. Simply go to the website you see here on your screen to sign up.